Excellent. Thank you, Nira. So uh, welcome, everyone, to uh, this session on taking uh, Coffee Break with JFrog. Um, we're going to be talking today about the JFrog CLI and user plugins with our guest speaker today, Siva. Um, so Siva, uh, just a, a quick intro uh, on yourself, um, you know, how long have you been with JFrog and, and what you're doing, uh, what, we, what you do at JFrog on a daily basis. Yeah. Thanks, Saro. So I'm Siva. I've uh, been with JFrog for more than a year and a half now. Um, so yeah, pretty much into solution engineering, solution architecture. So yeah, nice to be part of this coffee break, Saurabh. Thank you for inviting me. Awesome. So let's go ahead and dive into this. We're going to start talking about the JFrog CLI first, and then we'll switch gears and talk about the user plugins. Uh, now, with the JFrog CLI, there's, uh, there's definitely uh, some advantages and, and uh, that we want to keep in mind with, when we're talking about how to use the, the JFrog CLI. Um, but before we can get to the advantages and, and what's, uh, what's great about the way we can use it, uh, let's first talk about what it is, right? So what is the uh, JFrog CLI? Yeah, so for people who are not familiar, JFrog CLI is a smart client uh, with a very simple interface for all the JFrog products. So it is written in Go, and it is compatible in any any uh, platform which is uh, which supports GoLang. And it utilizes, in under the hood, it utilizes all the REST APIs, which are provisioned by JFrog. And the main important difference or the differentiation here is it is since it's a command line interface, you don't need a front end to do or manipulate anything. You just have to install it. You can play around in your local laptop. You can play it on your VM machine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it is more efficient and easy to maintain. Okay. Cool, and and so uh, you know, of course, the the installation uh, you know very simple for, for something like a command line interface. Um, you know, one, one of the one of the questions that that comes up often, uh, you know, people actually tend to not know about the JFrog CLI. Usually, when I mention the the CLI, uh, it comes as a surprise. To people people are not aware that you know such a thing exists, right? Um, so so it's it's a great tool though. Uh, uh, definitely. I think it makes sense to talk about some of the advantages that we get with it and some of the capabilities uh, that it has. So uh, what are some of the uh, CLI's advantages? Yeah. So to first, let me start off with the first question on the installation piece. You can install it in uh, different ways. Uh, we support different types of installation. You can even download it as a Docker image. Uh, the main advantages of using CLI is it, it knows to do parallel uploads and downloads, meaning um, if there are heavy uh, usage of um, like artifactory, it kind of you're in you are uh, trying to use multiple threads, like in a Java program, you can do that similar kind of a concept comes into the CLI. You can do parallel uploads and parallel downloads. The other thing is checksum aware, meaning if the binary is already present in artifactory, the CLI knows already that that binary is already present, so it will not even try to upload it. It tries to just add that marker or that uh, pointer into the database. So the other important features, again, it's like um, you can configure it with, um, by using SSH. You can configure it using your uh, API keys. You can configure it using the passwords. And it is kind of very easy to um, uh, um, uh, install and run in any machine. So especially if I have configurations with uh, like multiple artifactory instances, I can refer to uh, any of them from uh, you know, a single machine that's connected on that PPC and, and just reference any of these different machines and uh, just refer to it by the configuration name within the CLI. So for example, uh, you know, main artifactory. And yes. that would load up all the default configuration for the main artifactory, right? Um, as opposed to another artifactory instance Yes, uh, which would load up. Exactly. So there might be a scenario where you might have two, three artifactory instances, like you want to do a simple test on your development environment before you do something on your production environment. So you might be able to configure one artifactory as dev artifactory, the other artifactory as production artifactory. You can do a dry run. There is a flag called dry run 
which will help you to first configure it or test it out in your dev environment just by saying, okay, pointing that CLI to work with your dev instance. If something works out very well, then probably you can just do that in your production env environment. As I said, you can use the dry run flag, which will help you to say, okay, what is going to happen when you run this command? And that will help you to know this is what is going to happen. This is my, this is my, probably this is my output is going to be. And then you can execute it on your production environment. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, and, and then of course, you know, with any configuration option, uh, it, you know, want to be overridable. So, uh, you know, custom configurations and, uh, default support, uh, and, and multiple configuration support. So uh, really, really easy to work with and especially great for, I guess, developers, right? Uh, great for developers or anyone working on things like automation, people that don't want to deal with the UI um, exactly. or people that are working with things like bulk tasks. Uh, yes, exactly. Excellent. And then, uh, you know, can we, can we talk a little bit about the authentication um, mechanisms that we have available with the CLI? Uh, is, is it everything that we have in, in the UI? Um, I mean, what, what are what are my options with authentication, and how does that work? Yeah. So um, many of uh, many of the authentications which are supported through the UI is by default supported. But if you look at a build agent, or for example, dynamically spinning up build agents on a CI server where you want CLI to be part of your build agent. It makes sense to have this whole Docker image also included in your build agent, and then you can easily configure it using even SSH, or you can even use self-signed SSL certification, and with RSA keys, you can also authenticate to Artifactory. So this is these are kind of extra capabilities and functionalities which will help you to automate or make your build faster. Nice. Not to not to mention not having to remember that uh, the, the login credentials every single time, right? Yes, definitely. Um, excellent. So uh, you know some of the uh, you know additional advantages uh, that we get with the CLI, the the fact that it's really easy to use, uh, can be integrated with a number of different. Uh, tools and languages. Um, like I mentioned earlier with bulk operations, uh, that's another key part of this, right? In the UI, yeah. you can do the same level of bulk operations as we can with the CLI. Can you talk a little bit about file specs and, and how that can help us with things like bulk operations? Yeah, so most of the organizations use file specs uh, and they can also use something like wildcards and regular expressions for some of these bulk operations. So these are very well supported in the CLI, which means like you can just pro provide a file spec and say, okay, this is what needs to happen. And CLI is smart enough to know, okay, this is all the activities or these are the binaries which it needs to out either upload or download or um, um, even uh, deletion. As I said, when you do delete, use caution, use some try runs, etc. So these are the different capabilities and added value compared to using the UI. Awesome, yeah. You know, and, and one of the things that I, I personally really love about file specs is uh, that with file specs, we can separate, you know, the the what we're, uh, what we're acting on from what we're doing with it, right? Um, so, so separating that, that logic, that, that functionality uh, it is is very beneficial because now you can specify your set of resources and take different bulk actions for that same set of resources. Uh, for example, following it through your SDLC, right? Uh, yes. And you can have that. You can have the operations acting on the same uh, same resources this way, which is great. Um, Okay, so uh, you know res resumable operations, wildcards, and regex. Now, I, I want to make sure we're we're able to run through some examples here, um, uh, and then switch gears and uh, hit on user plugins, right? Because it's another important part of uh, you know doing some of these uh, maintenance tasks and automation tasks that we want to be able to achieve. Definitely. Okay. So the simulation mode was the the dry run that Siva was talking about just now. Um, but let's let's talk about some of the the different examples that we have for this configuration, right? Um, so you know you'll you'll be able to find all of this information on our Confluence page. We'll talk about 
uh, how we can set up a new artifactory configuration, um, switch the configuration to the default configuration, uh, show the configuration and clear it. So there, there's a number of different options you have with working with those configuration files and setting up uh, multiple uh, configuration targets uh, like we were talking about earlier, right? So uh, like Siva mentioned, you can go from a, a dev to a production uh, and have all of those configured in the CLI to, to work with each one, right? And, and do things like dry runs on uh, on production and test everything on, on dev with the same exact configuration. Excellent. So let, let's go ahead and, and switch gears now and jump into user plugins, right? Um, so we're going to start on user plugins by uh, getting an understanding first of the user plugin framework. So, Siva, can you describe the user plugin framework for us and, and uh, you know what, how how we uh, are able to use this? Yeah. So this whole this whole user plugin framework is a solution based, uh, especially for customers who have their own specific needs, which helps them to enhance some of the functionality or add more automation capabilities in and around Artifactory. And uh, it also, uh, the one important factor here to know, note is that it is all written in Groovy. So it is implemented in Groovy and it can be running on any JVM. So it, most of our customers use Jenkins probably which will help them to even automate some of these Groovy scripts to be run at a regular interval, uh, regular uh, time interval. Or they can also use the Artifactory public APIs, which are also provided as an internal object model, which is like the whole uh, Artifactory public APIs are all available, which you can leverage. And again, always when you write these kind of Groovy scripts, uh, it can be uh, kind of little trickier, so always apply some more of caution or apply some permission model when someone installs a plugin onto your uh, environment. Yeah, definitely. So, so uh, you know, with with this with this framework, um, I, I think I think one of the important things that that people are are usually looking for uh, is the ability to to create these custom plugins, right? Uh, the, the fact that it's a, it's a custom plugin is very important because there's a lot of generic solutions out there. There's a lot of solutions out there where, you know, I can grab the solution, I can plug it in, I can play it, and, and things will work, which is great. But that's great if I'm doing sort of a generic task, right? Uh, if I have something that's very organizational specific, there's something uh, very uh, specific that I need to do with some uh, artifacts, uh, then for that kind of a, a situation, uh, these this kind of a custom user plugin framework uh, would be very useful, right? Um, exactly. So we, for example, if I have a specific use case uh, which only my organization needs, it may not be available in a pub, pub, public plugin. So probably I have that advantage or I can leverage this plugin framework and write my own custom plugin and I can install it in my instance. Where, whereas uh, you can also contribute to this whole public community, if you feel that, okay, this plugin is something we need uh, JFrog to be hosted, of course, yeah, you can also contribute to our public plugin community as well. So if I create a custom plugin, I can submit that to JFrog and, and have that become a, uh, you know, sort of an out of the box supported plugin, right? Yes, um, yeah, we will, we will, yes, yeah. Excellent. So, so that, that's a great way of contributing to, uh, you know, contributing back to the uh, open source community on JFrog as well, right? Because these user plugins are hosted on our publicly available GitHub page. You can go ahead and download uh, these user plugins and install them in your Artifactory instance. With the on-prem solution, when you grab these user plugins, you're able to do some additional customization. Now, uh, see, there's there's things like the cleanup user plugin, for example. Um, mm -hmm. which I find to be very beneficial. Uh, but if I'm on the uh, JFrog Managed SaaS, um, what are my options for doing things like custom uh, sort of plugins? Or uh, what, what are my options for working with user plugins, things like cleanup? Yes, yeah, so typically you need to reach out to our uh, SRE team um, to see if, you're, um, uh, if you can install that plugin for the respective subscription. Again, it is more of... Uh, whether in which subscription level you are in, what type of plugins you need, et cetera, et cetera. 
but uh, you cannot do your own custom plugins on our SaaS in environment due to security and privacy uh, things. Probably only the ones which are approved by JFrog, uh, we will be able to install it on our SaaS instances. Okay. Okay, that's fair enough. So, uh, and then at least for the uh, you know the the JFrog managed ones uh, for the the ones that are on the uh, publicly available GitHub page, those are the user plugins that are um, officially supported, right? So those yes. are the ones I can get installed in my uh, SaaS account. Exactly. Yes, those can be installed in our SaaS. Account. Yes. Excellent. So, uh, you know, with, with user plugins, here come some, some of the uh, uh, different uh, mechanisms that you have available, things that you can hook into, things like download storage, authentication, replication, um, and, and then some of the different tasks and uh, things that you can execute, right? So you can execute these jobs and, or have them be uh, user triggered. Yes. Um, so, so, as, yeah, um, so as I said, these jobs can be scheduled automatically. Like with the Jenkins, you can schedule on a timely manner, like kind of a cron job, because it's all written in Groovy. The execution is a little easier. You don't need to do anything. Um, uh, just schedule the job to run at every, like every 15 minutes or every one hour or every day. And you can also trigger it because it's all again Groovy. You can go manually trigger it or you can mm -hmm. also trigger it through some kind of uh, automation script again. So it is still, it's time to, we give you all the flexibility um, and it is up to you how to leverage it. Right, so so I can hook into multiple different resources, do things like callbacks, and then I, I have multiple different execution points as well where I can uh, trigger this uh, either manually or automatically through a build system or some uh, uh, some sort of a script, right? So, uh, exactly. you know, a couple of the different examples where uh, you know it's uh, where these plugins are useful, right? So things like schedule tasks, uh, changing resolution rules. Uh, you know, one of the most uh, popular ones. Um, uh, so, Security Realms is, is an, actually another popular uh, user plugin. Um, downloading content, probably one of the most popular ones is uh, Cleanup, um, right? So, doing things like maintenance tasks, for example, is yeah. very useful on. Uh, on plugin because you can completely automate these things with a combination of the plugin and the CLI, right? Um, Definitely. So uh, excellent. You know, thank you, uh, Siva, for uh, all this great information on on the plugin framework, on uh, CLI uh, advantages, and and how uh, we can be uh, better leveraging these uh, these features in order to automate end to end uh, more in Artifactory and allow us to do more. Um, in, in our day-to-day. Uh, -day. Definitely. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Siva and Saurav. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, as we mentioned, you will receive the recording of this web webinar, and we hope you will be able to join us tomorrow for the last episode of this series. Tomorrow's topic will be SDLC management with the j Artifactory. With that, that is it from us for today. Uh, thank you once again, and we hope to see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.